Hello, in this video we are going to be detecting collision with the ground, so finally collision detection. So as usual, let's go to the definition file and we're going to create a enum because we're going to actually implement a, a state machine. Actually, we all already have a state machine for the engine, but it's like a mini state machine, a very basic one within the game state class that will allow us to keep track of what's happening. So it's going to be called game states. And there are going to be three states. There's going to be E, ready. E is just a naming convention that they use for enums. E plane, got to spell it correctly, and E game over. So by default, it will be set to E ready. So the pipes won't spawn the player won't be able to move or you, the bird won't be moving but as soon as they click on the screen you're set to e playing and as soon as they die so they collide with the ground or the pipe for this video just be the ground you're set to e game over and everything will stop as it is so we need states like this so now we're going to create a collision class that's going to handle all of our collision because we'll be doing similar collision for our pipes as well in a future video. So it's good if we abstract it out and reuse the functionality. So as usual, like I've said, just create the classes in the normal way that you've already been doing for your IDE. And this is gonna be just called collision. Yep, I wanna add it to my target. So in the collision.hpp, it's gonna get rid of all of this and put hash. Pragma once hash include SFML graphics HPP. We're gonna put namespace sonar and then we're gonna put class of collision. Let's spell collision correctly, it's always a good start if you can spell basic words correctly. Public and this is gonna have a collision constructor. And it's going to have a method which returns a boolean, which is check sprite collision. And this is going to be SF sprite sprite one. So it's just going to take two sprites, doesn't matter what order we pass them in. And it will just check for the collision between the two sprites if, that we passed in. If they have collided, if they're overlapping then we'll return true. If they're not, we'll return false. Pretty simple stuff. Now what we want to do is go to the CPP file and actually implement this. So open up the CPP file. I'm going to get rid of all of these comments. Put namespace, sonar, and in here let's put the collision constructor. It's going to be an empty constructor. Now we can do boolean. You know what, it will save time if we copy and paste this like so and if we put collision and then do ff rect float. So we're just going to get the rectangles around our sprites. This is something automatic that SFML does. So it's just equal to sprite one dot get global bounds because that's what that global bounds has been doing. It's been returning the rect the rectangle around your sprite. It doesn't factor in alpha, and this the global bounds one factors in transformations such as scaling. So we're going to do one for rect2 or do one for sprite2 which is called rect2 and to check for collision we just do if rect1 dot intersect rect2 and that's it we, and then we just do return true else return false. So if rect1 has intersected or collided with rect2, then we return true. If it hasn't, we just return false. So now go to your bird header file 
And there is a method that we require here, because at the moment in the game state, we have access to the bird object, the land object, and the pipe object as well, but we can't access the sprite. So we're gonna have a method that just returns a constant sprite, a reference to the sprite, I should say, that will allow us to pass that reference in to the collision methods that will allow us to check for collision. So we're gonna do const sf sprite ampersand because we are returning a reference get sprite and we're going to do const like so copy and paste that into your cpp file so if you go to the cpp file down here just whack it down here and we're going to do return underscore bird Right, it didn't pick it up because I have not done bird colon colon yet. So now that's all good. What we can do is go to the next part of our application, which is the land header file. So land.hpp. And we want something very sim similar to that. We need to be able to get the vector of sprites. So we're going to do const std vector. So that's the return type. And it's of type sprite and it's going to be a reference and I'm just going to call it get sprites and put const and now if we go to our cpp file so land.cpp go all the way to the bottom whack this down here and we need to put land colon colon and now we do return underscore land sprites like so now we'll have access to the sprite the land sprites and we'll be doing something similar in a future video for the pipes as well and now we can start in the game state detecting for collision so if we go to the game state .hpp first we want to do hash include i think you've probably already guessed it hash include collision.hpp create a collision object this isn't going to be a pointer because we don't need to reconstruct it afterwards so the default constructor is a-okay and now in the game state .cpp, let's just open that up in the constructor or the initialization method i should say we are going to actually i feel like i'm missing something from the header file that's it. We've created game states in the definition file, but we need a game state variable. So now sort of how we had bird state in the bird class. So we're gonna have int underscore game state. And in the CPP file, in the constructor or the initialization method, at the end, if we put underscore game state equals game States e ready now in the handle input we're going to change this up slightly so if the sprite is clicked we're not just going to automatically call the tap method which would move the bird up what we actually want to do is check if the game state isn't equal to the game over because we shouldn't be able to move if it's game over if it's not equal to underscore game state then we're gonna make it go up so if it's playing make it go up if it's ready that means we can make it go up and actually start the game in the update class now we are only gonna be moving the land and pipes if it's not equal to the game over so we can copy and paste this because if you've ever played Flappy Bird, which you probably have, you'll notice that before you even start playing the game, but while you're waiting and you're about to tap, the ground is actually moving and the bird is animating. So there's certain things that you'll do while the game is ready, but there's certain things that you will only do while the game is actually being played. So we've done this little part. Now what we're going to do is enclose the rest of it, the rest of it over here into 
if it's actually being played. So what we are going to do is put if game states e game plane if that is equal to the game state then we're going to enclose all of this like so let's just indent it so for the clock elapsed time all of that does not change that's a-okay for the bird update stuff that's a-okay as well we actually want to get rid of this and we want to put this outside we actually what we really want to do is put this in here so it's going to be animating while it's not game over the move pipes should only be called if it's plain aka that's when we would spawn these pipes move them and be spawning them we don't want to move them if it's like on the starting screen even though there's technically none there but if we did create some by default and then after we've done the bird update we can actually detect or check for collision detection. So what we're going to do is std vector, and it's going to be of type SF sprite. I'm going to call it land sprites equal to land get sprite. So now we have our land sprites we need to loop over all of them and check if the bird has collided with it. To do that, we just do for int i equals zero, while i is less than land sprites dot size, there we go, and then we just increment i, i plus plus, and now we just do if collision dot check sprite collision and we just pass in the bird sprite again it doesn't matter the order where we pass in the land first or the bird first and to do this you just get sprite and for this we put land sprites dot at i like so and if collision uh, we need an extra bracket hence why indentation didn't work properly and hence why it was moaning okay that's all good now we're just going to put game state equals game state e game over okay you might be wondering why did we get the land sprites and put it into a variable like so called land sprites but we didn't do it for the bird sprite the simple reason is there's only one bird sprite whereas the land sprites there could be one, there could be two, there could be three. At the moment, there's two, but there could be multiple. So this is just a dynamic way of doing it. So now we are ready to actually run this. So let's run this bad boy. And see what we get. Click play. At the moment, we have our bird in the right position. It's not moving up or down. The land is moving. The bird is animating, but there's no pipe spawning. And let me click. But the click is not working. So let's have a look where we've gone wrong. So I'm going to go up to where we are clicking. I'm going to assume, first of all, there's probably something to do with here. It is. I forgot to set the game state and we need to set it to game state plane because if you clicked, we are now playing. So if we run this again, click the play button and it loads. At the moment, it's all good. I haven't clicked play yet. And if I click it, we can move up and down and the pipe starts spawning. So the, obviously this is a little difficult because the pipes are very close to each other. And obviously there's no collision detection. But as soon as I hit the ground, it just stops. So that is fantastic. So we have collision detection now with the ground. We'll be covering colliding with pipes in a separate video. So feel free to check that out. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on my educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There will be a link with this video to our GitHub page 
which provides you with the source code from every part of this course. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have an amazing day.